This is Bob Bald from Fu Manchu, and you're watching Aftershock TV. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Aftershocks TV right here on the CMS Network at AftershocksTV.com. And of course, I'm Matt, joined by my Irish co-host there, Mr. Tom Brennan. Tom, what's going on, bud? How are you doing? Matthew, how was your week, my friend? It's good. It's over, so that's good. We're doing this on a yeah. Friday, so we got a nice uh, three-day weekend coming up. Uh, holiday yeah. Year, the President's weekend. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, man. As always, man, how about you? How are things in um, the old real estate world going? Ah, uh, the highs are high and the lows are brutal. Let me just leave it at that. So, yeah, uh, okay. it's all over the place. I mean, overall, it's good. Trajectory is positive. Business is good. But, goddamn, dealing with the general public has its uh, its challenges. Sure. It's a lot of that up and down, huh? I mean, it's the, you, you, mm -hmm. you know, you get high, you get low. That's kind of. Uh, yep. You know, I guess it's kind of exciting at the same time too when those highs hit, though. You know what I mean? That's kind of yeah, fun. yeah. It's yeah. It, it's a it's a long one. So anybody moving to North Carolina, I'm licensed in North and South Carolina. Shameless plug, uh, you know, shoot me a note and see can I take care of business? Absolutely, you know, give Tom the business. He's he's the best over there in Charlotte. So uh, yeah, man. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, great, man. So yeah, I mean, obviously, Tom. You know, like I said, we got a. Uh, Mm. I think a really cool show going on this week. We came up with some interesting uh, topics of discussion. Uh, I am looking forward to, before we get into them, though, you know, obviously uh, there's some, and we're going to get to, you know, talking about some shows here in a minute, but um, like I said, a, a couple of weeks away, I got mm. the Prong Voivod show I'm looking forward to up here. Like I said, you know, I'm seeing a lot of tours that I'm just missing the Bay Area purposely sure. because of the crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well documented, too. Yeah, it's well documented that it's a problem, yeah. It is. It's a major problem. Like I said, bands are getting gear stolen left and right. You know, there's no, you know, like I said, I don't want to get into all the weeds of that, but sure. it's difficult for these bands to tour you. So I've been kind of chopping out the bit to get to a show. So I just got a couple more weeks and I'll be uh, ready to, to go to, like I said, to that prong show and there's some other things coming up. What about you? What's coming up in Charlotte? Any, any, uh, well, any my, next, my next show is going to be next Tuesday night. I'm going to see um, Adrian Vanderberg and um, right. Jeff Tate. And that's coming to town. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And just today, Matt, I bought a ticket for another concert. Symphony X and Heathen are coming to Charlotte. So I, I picked that up today. Yeah, that's coming, I think, May 5th or 6th or whatever it is. So um, okay. uh, one of my favorite uh, venues, the Underground. Big shout out to the Underground in Charlotte. Just a great venue. And uh, tickets, get this, including fees, were $36 for Symphony X. Wow. And Heathen, and he um, mm -hmm. that is going to be a stellar, stellar um, gig. Um, big fan of um, both bands, particularly that. I mean, Heathen only have a handful of albums, but everything they do mm -hmm. is perfect. And uh, the last yeah. two um, Symphony X albums, I just think are tremendous. I always see Symphony X as like Dream Theater with a better singer, um, with Russell Allen. So just a great band. Yeah, you know, and I think Symphony X, just overall, they're just, I mean, a little, I love, I mean, they got one of my favorite bassists, Mike LaPond. That's that right. Too. Unbelievable. So, uh, great bassist. Um, you know, yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan, obviously, and, you know, they got just, just the whole band, I mean, just great musicians. I did, I've, never seen, I've only seen them once, and it was before I even knew who they were, I saw them years okay. ago at the uh, Gigantor, when Megadeth put on that Gigantor in the mm. mid 2000s. Uh, and you know, like I said, I, that's when I saw Dream Theater too at that show, and they put them both. And yeah, Symphony X was definitely blew me away. You know, like I said, it, and back then I wasn't really much into you know a lot of that type of metal. I, I'm more into sure. it now, more the prog stuff, but uh, back then I really wasn't. And you know, both those bands blew me away. So yeah, Symphony X is uh, that's and, and to, to be with Heathen too. That's interesting. You got a real yeah old school Bay Area thrash metal band. Yeah. With, uh, you know, progressive, uh, you know, uh, you know, metal bands. There. So that's a good. I it's, like that, though. I like when I do, too. I think it's going to work. You have. Yeah. When you have like three thrash metal bands, it can get a little like, you know, your ears can kind of get kind of worn out very quickly. But uh, when you mix it up a little bit like that, I think that's a good little package. I, I do, yeah. too. And I've obviously got Michael uh, Romeo. I think that's how you pronounce yes. it on uh, on guitar. So he's yes. his on his last two solo albums. I think War of the Worlds Part 1 and Part 2 are just incredible um mm -hmm. and actually dino jalusek we're talking about dino all the time he all sang time. on the last album so that album is tremendous so i'm a big fan of that type of music i know some people will see a band and they look at the track listing and they go how long is the song and they see 11 minutes they go oh that's it i'm out i see 11 minutes and i say okay i'm in 
So I love that, mm. those big lengthy arrangements and soaring guitar solos and atmospheric piece in the middle and shit. But yeah, I went, I, this, I tried to see Symphony X before, just before COVID. I think it was early 2020, late night. No, early 2020, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. They were supposed to play with Firewind, Symphony X, and somebody else. It was a pretty good bill, and they got cancelled. And mm -hmm. Symphony X are from good old Middletown, New Jersey. So New Jersey. local boys, uh, lo local to me at the time. I lived probably 10 minutes from Middletown for six years. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. They're Yeah, they're a great band. I mean, they really are. And you don't really yep. hear too much, uh, I mean, about them. No. I, I, I no. think because they got big... Like I said, around the mid two thousands is when they really started taking off. So they just kind of came a little later, you know. And then, like I said, that was the era where, you know, pumping out new bands through labels and so forth wasn't sure. really happening, you know. So they were one of those last sort of bands to really make it. I think, especially from that scene, hmm. you know, that progressive sort of. You know, and it's funny because they're not. They're not. I mean, yeah, they got some. Yeah, obviously, they got. Uh, you know some some keyboards and some sampling in there, but it's they're not a symphonic metal band. I wouldn't. No, that, they're not. They're know? just kind yeah. of progressive metal for me. Progressive you know, and they they just mm -hmm. go after it, and uh, they're just a good band. I know it's going to be a good show, great venue, a um, couple of months time. And I saw that today for thirty six bucks, and I said, "Yep, I'm in." That's yeah. I mean, God, see, I I just wish I had something right over here to get thirty six. I mean, guess I've got plenty of places here in the Bay Area. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But it's just. I'm not seeing those those kind of shows coming through town right now. It really it really sucks. Uh, you know they're skipping it out here, and, and you know sure. It, the Bay Area is very interesting when it comes to just the, the, what people like here. You know, I, I mm. always thought when I moved here, like yeah, everybody's going to come through here. It's a big city, right? I mean, yeah, everyone's going to play here. More bands play Sacramento because Sacramento is kind of known as really like a rock metal town. They right, a good scene there. Uh, the Bay Area, I think, That's where Tesla from. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think because, and, and Deftones are from Sacramento too, yep. and mm -hmm. I think a lot of it has to do with, because the Bay Area is, it's all the tech, you know, it's all it's the tech industry here. So not, people in the tech industry aren't really big metalheads. They're not, you know. So I think a lot of just bands mm -hmm. decide to, you know, Sacramento, then we'll skip on down to, you know, L.A. or, you know, wherever it is after this. So, uh yeah, it's unfortunate, but I'm, I'm I'm happy for you. That should be a great show, man. And, yeah, man. I'll give yeah. you a report on that. So even report. for the next show, yeah. even the next show, um, or the next show that we do, I should have seen. Well, I will have seen um, Adrian Vandenberg and Jeff Tate. So I'll give a I'll give the scoop on that one. Nice. Yep. Okay. Definitely looking forward to mm -hmm. giving us the scoop on that time. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. All right. So yeah, it's just to start things off here today. Um, we we got a, a request. One of our listeners, and we'll give him a shout out. Johnny Blade four eight seven three. Uh, hit us up, and he said, you know, he'd like to hear our, our take on Kings of Thresh mm. and whether they should put out new music. You know, we just did the whole thing with Pantera and what we thought about them putting out new music. So now we got something, well, obviously a little bit different, obviously, but in the same kind of thing here, Kings of Thresh. And just to, you know, rehash real quick about Kings of Thresh, it features ex-Megadeth members Jeff Young, David Ellison, and Chris Poland, I believe, played on a... A uh, handful of those shows as well. Um, they played, uh, you know, songs from all those those records, right? I, uh, so far, so good. Uh, so what they uh, mm. did, I think, some P cells stuff as well. So and killing, they're playing that. killing too. I think. And killing, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then killing my business. So um, killing is my business. So yeah. So I mean, classic, classic Megadeth. And the thing is, is obviously, I guess the over the years, Mustaine really didn't play anything off those records. Right, I mean those first, you know, two or three records. So, a lot of people want to see that stuff live, and so Jeff Young and Ellison decided in Poland, like, yeah, well, well fuck it, let's do it. Hmm. You know, especially after Ellison got, you know, tossed out of Megadeth, and uh, they all did. That's one thing they all have in common, right? They all get kicked out of Megadeth. Right. So, I, I and like I said, I always, I thought it was fine to do something like that. I think it's really cool to celebrate those songs and those albums, and so that's great. So now the question. Should those three put out new music? Hmm. What's your go ahead and, and give us your take on that, Tom? Um, uh, I think the nucleus of the early Megadeth, you know, the band are there. So if they do release new music, you can probably, you know, it's good. We've got a good idea what it's most likely going to sound like because that's what fans. That's what that's what fans are going to want to hear. There you go, right? And just on uh, you just mentioned about. Um, Jeff Young and Dave Elvis, and they're kind of the nucleus of the band. I know Chris Poland did play on a on a couple of they're releasing a live 
concert uh, tell my dog's barking um a live concert uh next month at the whiskey and um chris poland played on that at, at that gig so he's on the forthcoming live album but he's not the part of the touring band not that i'm aware of. maybe things have changed since but um so uh and from what i saw on youtube and just clips you know it sounds sounds really good i've got to be honest but um here's what i say about I, why not release a like why not release an album at least start with an ep do a couple of tracks get people's interest or even release a song a lot of bands are just releasing one single song that's not attached to anything here's a song here's what we're working on give people a taser a, t a taster you know get the feedback um there's no reason for any band not to release music so um if you got kind of that quality of musician but it can often happen as we said before matt that um you know, bands, the offshoots never quite compete or never quite as good as as good as mm -hmm. as the original nucleus of where they came from. So who knows what's going to sound like? I mean, they're probably, you know, they're getting their their chops and their um, uh, on the road. So they're probably getting the synergy together and learning how to play together. You'd often hear that about, you know, bands, they warm up on the road and then they come back into the studio. So I say if they'd release something, I would be very energized to hear it. So to um to our um to that post on on youtube my, my my answer is why not release something at least at least an ep or something like that small and see what happens yeah listen i'm i'm with you 100 percent on that myself i mean i think it's i think these days it's okay to do anything i mean i think mm. because of how crazy the business is and how little money there is for the artist i mean there's plenty of money obviously in the business itself but the artists are not getting uh, uh as much as they should be getting for that Right. And just because of the way it is, the state of the business itself, I think everyone, same thing, I think everyone should put out new music. Like you said, we, we went through with the whole Pantera thing, people. I mean, I know you, you didn't think so. I'm just, I just feel like, like you said, because artists are struggling to get paid in general, right? They don't want to make a, a decent living because, you know, if you're a musician, because, you know, they used to get paid how? Back in the day, they got paid from album sales. Now, of course, no one mm. buys records anymore, right? So that right. used to be their main revenue stream, you know, was coming from album sales. Now, they only make money when they're out on the road. And like we said, when we talked about the Pantera thing, right, it makes sense to put out new music so that you can then tour for those songs sure. as well. Um, you know, and, and that's why, you know, obviously, records are no longer, I think, as strong as they once were. Like, you don't really see these you know great big opus records anymore right well because i mean once again the music's being devalued that's that's for starters right right and there's it just it doesn't have the same values as it once did and no one's buying records so why are you going to put all this time and this energy and this money more importantly invest all this money in the studio hiring a great producer and all this stuff to put an album that people are just going to put on and forget about five minutes later you know kings are thresh I mean, they're obviously going to still sell tickets if they go out because people always want to hear those Megadeth classics. That won't change. But now, if you've got some new music, you've got something else to sell except for just a nostalgic piece. Uh, you know, if you, and especially like, as you mentioned, if, if you just put out a couple of songs, exactly. That's what yeah. I'm thinking too. You don't got to put out a whole album. Just put out three to four songs tops. That's all you got to do. And it keeps interest in the band alive. And like you said, then this way they can continue to tour because it's true. I, I think something like Kings of Thresh. You know, obviously the first tour, right? Everyone's going to see it great. Now, are you going to go ahead and do that again and maybe play some some different songs off those records? Okay, you could keep doing that. You know, maybe two, maybe three times if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. But if every time you go out, if you got two or three songs that you put out and that you could play live and you could sell on, you know, a piece of vinyl, you know, uh, and and you know, continue to sell some merch at these shows, this could be just another revenue street for these musicians because. How many bands can only only have to be in? I mean, are, are only in one band these days, right? Mm. That's the other thing too. These musicians have to be in more than one band. Someone like David Elvison, you know, he's in a bunch of a bunch of stuff. He usually he is. is, and he has to do that in order to keep, you know, just to, to make a living. So, you know, I mean, considering too that the integrity of music is pretty non-existent too. You know, that's the other thing too. It's like, well, just leave it to rest. It was great when it was in its heyday. Listen, there is no integrity anymore, not just in music, but in entertainment in general, in sports, entertainment in general. Everyone is a quote-unquote, I think, these days, uh, you know, everyone would be considered from, say, back in the day, a quote-unquote sellout. Because unless you're a legacy artist, it, you know, in, in a band like that where you don't have to rely on the revenue stream of a new album, if you're in Metallica, Guns N' Roses, you got nothing to worry about. But if, if you're everyone else... 
y- you have to kind of so called you know mm. put your maybe integrity aside to just keep your to keep your livelihood going. So yeah, man, I'm I'm with you a hundred percent. I think Kings of Thrai should go ahead, make a few, you know, definitely record a few songs, see what they can do, and then go ahead and tour again. The people still coming to to these shows because they like the new songs and they still want to hear the classics. Well, then they got something going that they can continue to do every couple of years. I think it's fine. I would agree. And like they're already in, I guess, like a narrow lane if they're only going to do the early Megadeth. Uh, Mm -hmm. So are they going to keep on coming back to an only early early Megadeth? So, I mean, if they came to my town, I'd go and see that in a heartbeat. I would be first in line. I would love to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, But if they came back again, doing the same set like six months or a year later, go, well, no, not really. There's nothing else to Mm -hmm. throw in there. So they've got two choices. Number one, they start three choices. Number one, they do covers. Uh, mm-hmm. Number two, they start maybe going a little bit further into the Megadeth catalog. Or number three, they release a couple of new tracks to bring me back. Mm-hmm. So me as yeah. a, as in like the fan uh, back. So, um, you know, I think it, I, I love the concept. Hey, but when somebody's out there flying the metal flag, even if I'm even if I'm not a fan of the band, they're waving the flag. And that's the most important thing for me. So um, this is something I'm, I'm interested in for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not like it's going to hurt, you know, any sort of legacy Fuck from no. Megadeth. I mean, like you said, once again, he's not playing these songs anyway live in the stain. So, no. You know, and these guys help play them and write them. You know, Jeff Young. I mean, it's cool seeing Jeff Young out there, too, because we haven't really heard much of him since then. No. Right? I know he's done other stuff, but I don't think he's done much in the metal world. You know, Chris Poland, you know, Mustaine always said he was the best guitarist, I believe, the bands ever had. Um, of course, in, including um, other than himself, I would think he would say that. But he always yeah. said Poland was the best. You know, he, I mean, he's an amazing lead guitarist. He's like more of a jazz, you know, trained guitarist. But yeah, I mean, these are these are prominent musicians. This isn't like these are just some you know guys that could you know you know just play a little riff here or there. Now, these guys, old, old, both Young and Poland can play their instruments extremely well. So uh, you know the guitar very well. So I mean, yeah, I, there's th- this is I think. A win-win for the fans, mm. for those guys, for the Megadeth legacy, because people are playing songs that Mustaine refuses to do, and then they won't hear. And supposedly, a lot, you know, like what I think Ellison came out, or I think it was Young actually. Jeff Young came out. He he, he thinks that you know Mustaine can't play these songs. Anymore. That's right. He said that. He actually yeah. said that. I don't. I don't think he should have said that. I think that was unnecessary. Um, mm. He did say that we're playing it better. Dave is getting too old. He doesn't have the dexterity anymore. Like I mean, come on, like. Jeff, you're playing to 100 people. Uh, you know, Dave Mustaine is playing to 10,000, so go figure. But anyway, I just think it was unnecessary. Again, just stupid comments. Stick to the music because I'm not interested in your opinion of Dave Mustaine. True. Couldn't care less. True. So, But, you know, I, I kind of get it. I mean, when you, when Mustaine, he doesn't hold back, right? So he pokes nope. these guys all the time. So I think it's just you're just fending for yourself and telling the guy to go, you know. And he fired them all, so they probably have an axe to grind. Well, of course, <laughs> so. exactly, exactly. Well, and I think he also threw, threw uh, sort of threw Jeff Young on the bus and was trying to say he was all fucked up all the time. And yeah, that's it's right. like Mustaine, well, Mustaine, has no, listen, he was fucked up all the time. He admitted that. So it's a little, mm. you know, a pot calling the kettle black there, you know. Kind yeah, of thing. it is so, what it is. You know, I agree. It is what it is, exactly. So, yeah, so yeah, I, I agree, man. Let's 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 see Kings of Thresh hopefully put out some uh, some new music. That yeah, I'm cool. in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.